Hi class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Dr. April Strom and today what we're going to talk about is more on function notation. So let's do a little bit of a review. In my last video I talked about this as well. So here, just a reminder, if we have something like y equals f of x as notation, just a reminder that the x is considered our input, the entire f of x is considered our output, and then the name of the function is considered the f. So let's look at an example here. Let's say I have f of x equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. And in this case, what I want to do is I want to find x, the input, when f of x equals 4, the output. So basically what this is saying is, can you find for me the input when we know what the output is going to be? Now that's an important distinction to make because you need to be able to do that in order to know where do I insert that 4 to build an equation to try to solve algebraically. So if I understand that f of x, the output, equals 4, I can go back up to my function right here and wherever I see an f of x, I can substitute in the 4 and build the equation. So let's do that. I'm going to put my 4 right into this f of x notation and build the equation that 4 is equal to negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. And this will allow me now to solve for the x, solve for the input. And when I'm done, I'll now have a pairing of some input with my output of 4. So all we have to do is solve here. So when I do on this equation to solve is I'm going to, how about we go ahead and get rid of the 4s. I will subtract 4 from both sides of this equation. I now have 0 is equal to negative x squared plus 3x. All right, that's really good news because now what I can do, since my equation is equal to 0, I can look here and say to myself, all right, both terms have an x in them. So how about we factor out the greatest common factor, which is an x. So let's do that here in this case. I still carry down my zero is equal to, I'm gonna bring out an x. That negative though is gonna have to stay in. So I have an x on the outside. I now from this term still have a negative x that remains. Plus here again, I'm factoring out the greatest common factor of x. So three remains. And I'm going to pause for a second and just say double check that we did this factoring out the GCF thing correctly because um, if I didn't, obviously, everything after this step is incorrect. So just to double check, do a little mental math here, if I distribute x times the negative x that's sitting here, I do in fact get negative x squared, awesome. Distribute the x on the 3, when I do that, I do in fact get positive 3x, awesome. So everything is good to go. So now, once I have everything factored, I can use something called the zero product property. And that property tells us, because you have two things being multiplied together, let's actually set each one of those products to zero. Because we know, in order to achieve the zero, one of those things, one of those quantities, must be a zero, perhaps both. So we're gonna set the x equal to zero as one equation. And then we're gonna set this other product, negative x plus 3, also equal to 0. Now, the great thing is x equals 0 is done. It's already solved for, so I know one of my input values. Let's get the other input value. What I could do here, a couple of things. You have options. You can subtract the 3 on both sides and then finish off dealing with the negative, or you could go ahead and add your x to both sides and then bypass the whole negative issue. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to add x to both sides. And when I do, the negative x plus x add up to be 0. What's left is 3 is equal to 0 plus x, or just x. And if you don't like how that's written, by the way, you can always just flip this around. That's the same thing as x equals 3. So now I have my two input values. Kind of interesting. We got two solutions out of this, two input values for my one output value of 4. If I wanted to write as ordered pairs, I have when x is 0, the input is 0, I have an output of 4. And when I have an input of 3, I also have an output of 4. This still makes this thing, this equation a function. This is totally allowed for us to kind of use different uh, input values to achieve the same output value. Now let's do one more example. So here I'm going to do the, use the same function, f of x, but I'm going to this time find x when f of x equals 6. Let's see how different that looks. 
So I'm going to take my six and substitute it into the f of x, just like I did the previous example. So I have six equals negative x squared uh, plus three x plus four. I'm gonna start this just as I did this first example by subtracting four to both sides. So when I do that, unfortunately though, I do not have zero left over. Watch what happens. I end up with six minus four, so I have a two is equal to negative x squared plus three x. This, of course, this piece plus four minus four, that does add up to zero. So here's my new equation. So unlike over here, I was set up to go ahead and factor and all that good stuff. Here I gotta think about this a little differently. Because I don't have that it's equal to zero, I need to make it so. I need to make it equal zero. So I'm gonna do that by subtracting the two back over. So if I subtract my two on both sides, I now have the new equation that zero is equal to negative x squared plus three x minus two. Now I have something we call the trinomial. And here we're gonna do a version of factoring, but it's not gonna be a factoring by a greatest common factor because I don't have a greatest common factor to factor out. So instead, my strategy is, let's try to factor it into two binomials. That because we know by the zero product property again, that one of those binomials is at least a zero. Okay. But I have this really nasty negative that's in front here. Let's deal with that first before we tackle the factoring. So here's the cool thing. What I'm allowed to do is how about we divide everything by a negative one? Just because I like to factor when the x squared is a positive one. Now, you got to be careful. You got to do this legally. So I'm going to divide this term by a negative one. And that's totally awesome to do as long as you divide everything else by the same negative one. So I'm going to divide this term by negative one, this term by negative one, and don't forget your zero by negative one. If that zero was something else, it would make a difference. It's not here though. Zero divided by negative one still is our zero. Negative x squared divided by a negative one is now our positive x squared. Great. Positive three x divided by a negative one is negative three x. Great. Negative two divided by a negative one. Now that gives us a positive two. Now what we can do is take this trinomial and factor it like we talked about into two binomials. And let's see, factors of x squared. Well, x times x gives us x squared, so we can use that here and here. Then we jump to the two and we say, what are factors of two that sum up to be a negative three? Be careful here, I need a positive two, but I need their factors to sum up to be a negative three. So we know two times one gives us a two. If we make them both negative, let's see if that works. And put them here. So let's just foil this out distribute everything, all the terms, and make sure that we've got exactly what we started with in the line above. So if I do x times the x, if I multiply those guys together, I have x squared, great, x times a negative one, and then a negative two times x, add those together, negative three x, great, and then a negative two times a negative one, positive two. So we've factored perfectly. Now, one more step here to do is I've got to take each of those binomials and set them to zero, again, via the zero product property. So I have x minus two equals zero. I can finish solving that in just a second. And then I have x minus one equals zero. So those are my two equations. When I finish solving, I will add two over here, add one on this equation. So I have x equals two as one input value. Over here, x equals positive one as the second input value. And just like we did previously, we got two input values for the same output value. And if we wanted to write those as an ordered pair, I would simply have an input of a positive two gives me my output of six, and an input of positive one also gives me an output of six. So now you can see a little bit more about how to tackle this function notation um, when we are given an output value, but we have to find an input value. So I hope this video has been helpful for you, and I hope you continue watching the videos on the next section where we're going to talk more about composition of functions.